My name's Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this video, we're going to be talking about random walks. Randomness is usually a selection between two values. So we have a random number generator and it will pick a number between these two values. But often this is jumping around and uh, sometimes we've seen with a Gaussian distribution or other distributions we can constrain that jumping around a bit. But a random walk is slightly different from those types of random selection. A random walk takes a random deviation from the current location. So it's why it's called a walk, because you're in a spot, you could take a step in any direction. The way this kind of happens um, in nature is that we see ants, for example, that meander around the place searching, foraging for food. So in this diagram, we depict that uh, they leave a nest and then they walk in some kind of random path, um, which we might call a random walk. We can see on the right of this diagram that if you trace many of those paths, um, eventually you kind of cover most of the territory. This kind of project, this kind of a pattern is possibly also used in some uh, vacuuming robots as well, just to meander around and eventually cover everything. What we're interested in here is the fact that each next step in the ant's path is a deviation from its current location. It's not jumping all over the place, it's only moving from where it currently is. So in PDE we're concerned with music and sound of course, so instead of ant paths we're going to be looking at melodic contours and how we can use a random walk to um, build a melodic contour generator. So we're going to start with something to make a noise. Um, so I'm going to start with a simple sine wave oscillator. I'm going to add um, an amplitude envelope to that oscillator. We we'll use the V-line command to generate the amplitude envelope. And we'll pass it um, a message. The message will be to start at some variable um, loudness value as an attack. Make that quite short, just 10 milliseconds. Then to decay to zero, taking 200 milliseconds to do that, and wait uh, the 10 milliseconds. Uh, in fact, one enhancement I might make to this is to put in another multiply after the V-line, um, which actually multiplies it by itself to provide a kind of exponential um, attack and decay, which will sound a little bit more interesting. So we need, of course, to have a digital to analog converter at the end so we can hear our sound. And if I send a value to uh, for loudness into there, then we get our um, simple tone. So now let's look at varying the frequency of this oscillator uh, using a random walk. Uh, we're clearly going to be starting um, with a random number generator. I'm going to choose a fairly small number because I don't want the steps um, in our melody to be too wide. So this will move um, up to seven steps. But we want the values to go not just ascending but also descending. So I'm going to subtract three from our potential um, zero to six values. That will give us values now that range from negative uh, three to positive three. We can put a number box on the outlet so we can actually see what that's going to be. Um, and if, for example, I bang that, we'll demonstrate that the, the values we're getting. So we're getting values between negative three and positive three. And this is going to be the step that um, our malady will take. So take it from where, um, we're going to use a float object with an initial value of 60. So we'll start from a MIDI perspective at middle C. Um, and this float object stores that number. At the end of this process, we're going to add together 
the deviation, random deviation, and the um, initial number. But I need to control the order of operation here, so I'm going to use a trigger object. It will take that number, it will send a bang to choose our deviation for our walking step, and pass the initial number on. And then if we have a look at the outlet there, and I bang the float. It's always going to send out 60 at this stage. And it's going to choose a random deviation plus or minus three steps from 60. So we're almost there, but we're always starting from the same location from middle C. So instead what we want to do is when we get the uh, new pitch, we want to feed that back into our float so that that then becomes the point from which our deviation goes for the next step. To turn that MIDI data into a frequency, we use the MIDI to frequency object. Connect that to our oscillator. Um, when we bang things, we make sure we bang our amplitude envelope and go. So, hopefully you can hear that the melody is creeping lower at this stage, but each step is smaller than the other one. I'm going to insert um, a number message box back into here just to reset um, this to 60, so that whenever we want to we can get back to starting again at middle C. Um, so we have our random walk function here um, which is working um, well. If I automate that with a metronome then we'll be able to hear how that progresses as a melodic contour. At times we get repetition because sometimes the random deviation is zero. We currently don't have any constraints on the high number or the low number that this could go to. So I've uh, got my 60 here I can reset anytime I need to. So for one final flourish we will um, just vary the loudness as well. We'll just use a simple linear randomness to do this. Um, I'm going to use values up to, oh, let's look at go to 100 again. Um, but I will divide those by 200, which will give me values, if we just look at them, between 0 and 0.5, I expect. Let's just put a bang on here. Um, and then I'm going to replace this fixed value of 0.5 with an addition of 0.5 from this randomness. So we're going to get values from halfway up the volume to full volume um, as we go. So we've got some variation in the um, loudness. And we've got a generated melodic contour from our random walk. Other steps that you could follow to make this even more interesting would be to introduce some phrasing, so we get some longer notes and shorter notes. Um, maybe some quantizing of the pitches, so that rather than being chromatic, you might uh, quantize it to um, a major scale or something like that to make it sound a bit more sensible in that regard harmonically. Anyway, have a go at that, and I will see you in another video.